Welcome back. In this video, we are going to determine the six trigonometric functions of quadrantal angles. And quadrantal angles are those angles which fall on the x and y axis. So a quadrantal angle then is, is any angle that might be 90 degrees, 180, 270, 360. So really any angle that's a multiple of 90 from standard position will be a quadrantal angle. So as we have seen up to this point, an angle in standard position, if we located a particular point on the coordinate plane, we would draw our hypotenuse R, that's our terminating side, and we end up with a right tri triangle, and our angle here is some angle theta. And we were determining like how far out on the x-axis we were, or how high up on the y-axis we were, and we also were able to use the distance formula to calculate R. So we would find that x equals something, y equals something, and r, using our distance formula, would equal something. And it didn't matter which quadrant we were in. We could still locate a particular point and we would draw r. We would have our y, in this case, in the third quadrant, y was negative and x was negative. And again, we determine some value, x equals, y equals, and r equals. Now let's take another look at this. You know, what happens as we locate points that get closer and closer and closer to 90 degrees. Our theta gets closer and closer to 90. Well, let's take a look at that. So as we get closer and closer and closer to 90 degrees, let me put my x-axis back. As we get closer and closer and closer to 90 degrees, our, our angle measure, of course, gets closer to 90. But R, the hypotenuse, is going to get closer and closer to what Y is. So up here at 90 degrees, as it turns out, Y will equal are, they'll become the same length. This hypotenuse will become the exact same length. Now, R will always be positive, but X and Y certainly are not. So if we're working down here in the fourth quadrant and our angle gets closer and closer to Y, well, Y would still be negative but R will equal positive. And of course, R, when we're on the y-axis, R will equal the absolute value of Y, because R is always going to be positive. Okay? And the same goes along the x-axis. As our angle gets closer and closer to the x-axis, We'll have an X, a Y, and an R, but at this point, R will equal the absolute value of X. So let's take a look at a sample problem, and I'll show you what I mean. Let's determine the value of the six trig functions of a 180-degree angle. So let's take our angle here in standard position. And let's go ahead, and it doesn't really matter what our point is. Um, 
but let's go ahead, let's just pick something simple. Let's use negative one on the X and zero on the Y. Well, our angle is 180 degrees, so we know X equals negative one, Y equals zero, and R equals the absolute value of negative one or one. So R is going to equal positive one. That's essentially the hypotenuse of our right triangle. So then we can zip through our trig functions. Sine is y over r. And since y is 0 and r is 1, the sine of 180 degrees is 0. The cosine of 180 equals x over r. Well, x is negative 1 and r is 1. So negative 1 over 1 is negative 1. So the cosine of 180 is negative 1. Tangent of 180 is equal to y over x. Well, y is 0 and x is negative 1. 0 negative zero. And then we can go ahead and do our reciprocal functions as well. So the cosecant of 180 is equal to r over y or 1 over 0, so that would be undefined. The secant of 180 equals r over x, which is 1 over negative 1, so that's still negative 1. And then the cotangent of 180 equals x over y, so that is negative 1 over 0, and that is undefined. So let's do another sample problem. Let's locate the point 0, negative 4. We'll find the measure of the angle in standard position and determine the value of the six trig functions. So let's take a look at the point 0, negative 4. That 0 on the x, negative 4 on the y, that is down here. Okay. So that is our quadrantal angle of 270 degrees. So my ordered pair here, 0 on the x, negative now this will also be the equivalent of a negative 90 degree angle if we went in the opposite direction. So just something to keep in mind. So let's take a look and see what we have here. So we have x value of 0, a y value of negative 4, and an r value of the absolute value of y which is 4. So r is 4. And we could reduce this to 1 if we wanted to, but then we'd also have to reduce y uh, to negative 1. So if we decided to, we could make this negative 1, and then this would be positive 1. But as long as there is these are the same, we're going to be fine here. So let's go ahead and do our six trig functions. The sine of 270 degrees is y over r, y is negative 4, r is positive 4, and we get negative 1. So you can see here, if we reduce them both by our common factor, we're still going to get our same answer because we've got to reduce. So the cosine of 270 is equal to x over r, and x is 0, and r is 4, so that value is 0. And the tangent of 270 degrees is equal to y over x, so that's negative 4 over 0, so that would be undefined.
And then for our reciprocal functions, our cotangent, of course, is going to be just the reciprocal of that, uh, negative 4 over 0. So 0 over negative 4 is 0. The secant, the reciprocal of 0 over 4 would be 4 over 0, is undefined. And you're going to see the pattern here. And the cosecant, of course, would then be 4 over negative 4. So that also is negative 1. So there's your introduction to quadrantal angles. You can see our values that we're going to get for these are either going to be positive 1, negative 1, 0, or undefined. But I will ask you to show your work so I know how you arrive at your answer. And with that, I will see you in class.